Hello, welcome to Bragway TV. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Gamma Abdel Nasser Hussein. Gamma Abdel Nasser Hussein was a controversial leader of the Arab world. He was born on January 15, 1918, in Alexandria, Egypt, and died on September 28, 1970. Born in a rundown area of a mud brick house on an unpaved street in the Baco section of Alexandria, his father was in charge of the local post office there. From Alexandria, his father was transferred to Al Katatiba, a village where he started his former education. He went on to live with his uncle that had just been released from a British prison in Cairo. Most Egyptian publications one we come across will state his birthplace as Banimor, a more primitive upper village of his ancestors. This is because they are trying to create a more ethnic image of the president as a member of the class of the rural agrarians, Felahin. While growing up, he was always in trouble with his school teachers. Most of them were British and Nasser would be found taking part in anti-British street demonstrations. Needless to say, that didn't end him student of the year in school. What it did end him, however, is a lifelong scar from a blow he received on the forehead in one of the demonstrations. After completing his secondary school, he went to a law college where he spent several months before he was admitted into the Royal Military Academy, where he graduated as a second lieutenant. He proceeded to serve in the Egypt army in Sudan, where he met three other fellow officers that changed the course of his life. Zakaria Muhyiddin or Zakaria Muhyiddin, who later became the vice president of the United Arab Republic. Abdel Hakim Amir, who later became a field marshal, and Awa Esadat, who eventually succeeded Nasser as president of Egypt. The four of them started a secret revolutionary organization called the Free Officers, and their aim was to oust the British and Egyptian royal family. He fought in the Arab War against the newly founded state of Israel. In fact, he was one of the officers in one of the three battalions that were surrounded by the Israeli for weeks in a group of Arab villages called the Fallujah Pockets. The free officers grew in number and power, and on July 23, 1952, he and 89 other free officers staged a coup d'etat that was almost bloodless, and they succeeded in ousting the monarch. Sadat was of the opinion that the King Farouk I and some other members of his group be publicly executed, but Nasser didn't agree to that. Instead, he showed mercy and permitted them to go on exile. With the monarch gone, the country was taken over by the Revolutionary Command Council, which consisted 11 officers controlled by Nasser. Major Muhammad Nagib became the head of state, but in fact, he was only a figurehead. While the person really controlling things was Nasser, he kept that fact so well hidden that even the shrewd foreign correspondent had no idea of his real role in the government. He came out of hiding in a bold and authoritative show of power when Nagyub was deposed and placed under house arrest in the spring of 1954. Nasser named himself Prime Minister when this happened. It was that same year that an attempt was made on Nasser's life by an Egyptian fanatic at a mass meeting in Alexandria. The government was arrested and confessed that he had been given the job by the Muslim Brotherhood. Upon hearing that, Nasser turned his severe attention down on the extremist Islamic organization. Nasser announced the regulation of the new constitution in January 1956, which made Egypt become a socialist Arab state with a one-party system and with Islam as the official religion of the country. The election, which held in June, produced a result where 99.948% of the 5 million people in Egypt voted for Nasser, who happened to be the only candidate for a presidential position. The constitution was approved by 99.8%. With that, Nasser became not just the president of Egypt by control, but also by action. With his open ascension to power, the future of Egypt's economy began to look bright and promising. A contract was signed in secret with Czechoslovakia for war materials, and the US and Great Britain had agreed to contribute about $270 million to finance the first stage of the Aswan High Dam project. On July 28, 1956, the Secretary to the United States, John Foster Dulles, cancelled the aid the US made, and Great Britain cancelled the next day as well. In a move to show that he's in control, despite the fact that the help fell through, NASA announced the nationalization of the Suez Canal in a mass meeting in Alexandria five days later. He promised that the tolls that would be generated by Egypt in five years would build the dam. But both France and Britain had their eyes on the canal, so they conspired with Israel to take over the dam from NASA's hold. On October, their plan kicked into action. When the Israeli forces invaded the Sinai Peninsula, and two days later, French and British planes attacked the Egyptian airfields. The Egyptian air force was almost completely destroyed in the attack, and the Israeli fleet occupied the Sinai Peninsula to Sham al-Sheikh. In spite of all this, 
Nasa still emerged from the brief war with its reputation intact throughout the Arab world. He wrote a book, Philosophy of the Revolution in 1954, and in it, he talked about heroic and glorious roles which never found heroes to perform them and stated that one of his goals in life was to be the leader of the 55 million Arabs. 224 million Africans and the 420 million followers of Islam then. In 1958, Syria and Egypt formed the United Arab Republic. He had big dreams for it, hoping that it would include the whole world someday. His dream was not to be actualized as Syria withdrew in 1961, but Egypt continued to be known as the United Arab Republic up until 1971. One of Nasser's most astounding accomplishments was the fact that he managed to stay in power as the president of Egypt despite the strength of his opponents. The Muslim extremists, the communists, rival military cliques, old political parties, dispossessed landowners, what was left of the foreign colony and supporters of Nagyu. On the other hand, he made Egypt a police state where mail was opened, communications media strictly censored, telephones taped, chief newspapers nationalized and visitors' room searched. There was a complete absence of political democracy as in the Western sense and one party candidates for political offices were handpicked by NASA and associates close to him. Political enemies were also driven into concentration camps in the desert. He was known as a revolutionary leader and maybe even a complex man, but in his private life, NASA was simple and conservative. In fact, no other Arab leader to date has managed to amass the amount of support from masses throughout the Middle East as NASA did in all his years in power. Nasser was known as a charismatic army officer that was the first pure blood Egyptian to rule after several millennia of being ruled by outsiders and restoring the dignity that had been denied the people of Egypt under the rule of the foreigners. He died in 1970 from a heart attack. What's your take on Nasser as an African politician? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video. Share and subscribe to our channel.